Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Man Stevens. Hello. Rob the old guy. You're listening to the Rob Charney yep, Show. Yep, it's beyond here. And that's it. It's just the Mad Trio for once. It's not a quadrilogy. <laughs> it's not Mad Trio plus, plus one. <laughs> so Or a plus one. Our traditional opening is what we call Bring Out the Dead. These are the folks that we love, and we hope you love them as much as mm. we, we do. Melinda Dillon, who appeared in A Christmas Story, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, dies at 83. The What's, G- that? What's that? Uh, that's not that young. That's a, good, that's, that's a good run. I mean, I have good friends that are older, um, but, you know... I still think I'm hoping to make it a little longer than that, but you, know, you never know. <laughs> the genius, yeah. the genius slash leaping Lanny Poffio brother, Poflo, Poffo, the brother of Macho Man <laughs> Randy Savage dies at 68. Now that's young. Mm. Well, older than Randy made it. True. The father of the peeps, Marshmallow Candy, dies at 98. Ira Bob Bourne. Now yeah, that's, that's a, good, a run. good run. Yeah, it's decent, especially if he ate all those peeps. And uh, this one kind of hurts a bit. Star of Laverne and Shirley, Cindy Williams dies at 75. Mm. Yeah, that's a bummer. No. She, was, uh, she wasn't sick very long, that's my understanding. It just uh, kind of came on and went. I guess that's the way to do it. And wasn't that how Christy Alley died? Wasn't it she was just diagnosed and a short time later she passed? Yeah, you know, I guess Christy just kind of didn't get her colonoscopy often enough <laughs> she may still be with us had she so who knows no time for segregate uh, sar- excuse me segregation sergeants actor <laughs> kevin no time for that either who, no time <laughs> no for time. sergeants actor kevin o'neill dead at 77 the younger brother of ryan o'neill successfully worked as an actor throughout the 60s and 70s hmm. barrett strong motown singer and songwriter dies at 81 i'll be honest i'm not familiar with him but I, i'm not the biggest motown guy and Lisa Loring, Wednesday, in, in the original Adams Family series, dies at 64. That's way too young. Oh, really? I hadn't heard that one. Huh. And Well, now I'm depressed. So and I'm and sure. one more. See, that's the oh, thing. What more. we're going to do is we're going to make you depressed, <laughs> and we're going to bring you right out of it into something cheery, hopefully. William... Uh, uh, darn it! Which one? Is, that changed on me. The, the, the gentleman, the, the gentleman who actually was one of the co-creators of Sesame Street, passed away. And here is something I never thought I'd read, and it's actually made me laugh. And it, it's probably you know probably going to hell for laughing. But here's the headline. <coughs> Let me do it my best news anchor voice. <coughs> me me me. I tried at home ketamine therapy. Now I wish I had never done it. Mm. Um. So, James, w- yeah, would you have thought? Let's try at home ketamine with, without having mm-hmm. anybody to be there to warn you, to guide you, to tell you the type of shit you're going through. Uh, this does not sound fun. So, uh, apparently, ketamine has been used as a treatment for a long time. So. Um, was it prescribed or was it just this person did on their own? Let's see. That's what I'm trying to, uh, despite being, I think if, <clears throat> my understanding is if it's prescribed, you have to do it under a doctor's supervision. Uh, so here, so yeah. if he, I don't think there's that home version. That, so, uh, so here it is to qualify for the treatment. I answered a short questionnaire online about my health yeah. and history and had a telephone, a telehealth appointment. The physician assistant I spoke to declared me a great candidate. After just a few <laughs> minutes into the sessions, none of the information from the health questionnaire I'd fill out was reviewed during the, the appointment. Uh, the ketamine was mailed to me in pill form several days later since I'd never tried the therapy before. I am curious if they asked her about, because it's a woman who did it, if the menstrual cycle, because every woman I've talked to said that question's on everything, and there's and half the reason that that's not attached to the problem. Okay, okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. They sent ketamine in the mail. Yes, mm-hmm. which is, I think, a federal offense. 
Well, no, because if it was a legitimate place, it could be real because you can get prescriptions through the mail. No, I mean, they don't. None of them that <laughs> I know of, even um, the one through Medicare. So, Medicare, their prescription drug plans, I don't think they even send um, prescription drugs like the narcotics opioids through the mail no i don't think you can do schedule so, of drug i don't think you would be sending ketamine through the mail so let's see the ketamine was mailed to me in pill form uh yeah so basically it was and mexico no this is i'm pretty sure this is the united states um you well, know the story might be but what pharmacy what doctor did they use uh, this oh, is no. from this is by the way this is a huffington post article uh even, sure oh, this isn't the onion? oh here we go even though it became yeah. legal in the united states in 2019 for most mental health practitioners to provide ketamine or special k to the old uh, partiers to patients suffering from depression often in often through in-house infusions it's still re a re regulated substance but it grows progressively more common since then. And when the pandemic inspired a change of the laws regarding telehealth in 2020, numerous companies sprung up to offer special K or ketamine therapy the, that could be conducted at home after being prescribed via telehealth consultation. consultation. The doctor talking to you, damn it. <laughs> I can't say consultation. it. <laughs> I'm porky pig all of a sudden. I don't know what John's drinking, but... I don't want any of it anyway. Sitting on a bar stool. Um, I just never thought that, like, in my lifetime, because back in the day, if you watch all those documentary about the 90s, it's a, it's a party drug. You can't hold it. Just the fact now you can get it mailed to you just makes me laugh. Yeah. However, so what was, the, uh, what was the bad reaction that this person had or the reason why she's sorry she did it? Let's see. This is what I'm trying to find. Yeah. It helps if you read the article before we go on the air. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've I've been a little busy. <laughs> oh, no excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here it is. Makers of the thyroid medication Armor uh, A R M O U R thyroid which contains hormones I <sighs> I can't pronounce this, nor am I going to try. Says ketamine should be administered to thyroid patients cautiously, be, cautiously because uh, the use can make a marked hypertension and tachycardia. I read that combining ketamine with thyroid medication, at least in some patients, lead to exactly these symptoms. I've been no having... Great. So basically, she was having heart issues, it sounds like, which is reaction to previous medication, which the telehealth doc should have realized, hey, she's on XYZ. <sighs> I, yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, I, I still think her her taking this stuff via mail is just a bad idea. <laughs> uh, that's what that's where I'm where I'm at. I, I think you get a, a prescription drug of that potency, ketamine, through the mail. Through someone that I I can't I don't hear anything where she verified that they were a legitimate place that that is a good place to be soliciting. I, I don't know. I just it all sounds sketchy to me. Like she didn't do her damn research. <laughs> yeah, and Something I mean, doesn't sound right. All of her prescriptions, you know, they should have had all that list and everything. It just sounds like she's just an idiot, honestly. <laughs> oh, here, so, here's a, honesty, I think she got what she deserved. Here's here's another part of this that I'm kind of skipping around a bit, but this actually made me laugh. Um, I call this marketing. I have never been diagnosed by a clinician for anxiety or depression, but honestly, who hasn't found the last couple of years to be anxiety inducing? Plus, the ads I've seen on Instagram and Facebook made ketamine therapy look harmless. Hmm. I, uh, by the way, whoever's ever doing that marketing, seriously, congratulations. That's damn good target audience. 
uh, marketing with images of smiling people living through their happiest lives thanks to this life-changing drug. The ad sometimes referenced anxiety or depression. <laughs> That's mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I have. <laughs> there's a number of TikToks and the YouTubers I've uh, I've, I've watched over the years that have talked about. Well, last year, year and a half that have actually talked about um, ketamine and being in with a doctor and what it's helped them. So some people it has legitimately helped to get past trauma and et cetera. Um, but everybody I've read has talked about it. They were in a therapist's office and the therapist was there the whole time. And some of them, I'm assuming there was a medical professional there too. I just don't doing it at home. Just, I don't know. <laughs> it just, yeah, it's a yeah, lot. That's, that's my problem. And why I think they're just, full of shit this company this whoever this these people are that that get, get, told this woman that we're, we'll take care of you with our ketamine treatment um uh, that's why i'm just like okay first i think they need to have their license revoked they need to be sued by this lady for one um and the other thing it's like for something like that i mean i've heard of people taking acid or shrooms for different um things and every single one of those person has somebody who is like oversight to them the first sure, time they do it by sure right. as you will so right that's why i'm like this lady didn't do her research she didn't take any of the time to do anything she just was like oh this is safe and, and just perfect you know it's like who is your support system yeah that, oh this looks jumped up and said that's a bad idea this that this looks fun let's do a hallucinogen um so the, the, by the end, myself <laughs> let's see if that works out that, let's hope she didn't watch anything really fucked up beforehand um so here's here's something i actually agree in it it says i also believe we need to take a step back and reevaluate our wellness culture in general the truth is most of the time a better life is just not a click away or a pill away in recent years we've been told that when we're unhappy our lives aren't as good as they could be because we haven't bought the right supplement or <laughs> listened to the right meditative podcast or tried the right hack uh mm. I, so I actually think the article was, was, was worth reading just for that, but I, just the fact that she tried it at home is, <laughs> is, uh, or got it through the mail. On the other hand, the people I've known who have done it did it home too. However, they didn't get it through the mail. <laughs> they usually got it in shady areas of town. I think that's safer than whatever the hell she did, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. So it sounds pretty, pretty sketchy. Yeah, <laughs> agree. I agree. Oh, well. Anyways, um, so now I've heard conflicting reports. Maybe Rob can clear this up and see what you heard. <laughs> so, was this Chinese balloon shot down or not? Yeah, it was shot yes. down. Yeah. Okay. I've heard some people say it was. Um, other sources are saying it's not, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't there to yeah, see Yeah, no. It so, is. There, the, there's debris already washing up on shore, and they're out there gathering stuff. No, it was uh, it was taken down by an F-22. That with, was my uh, that was my favorite part. They rocket took... To rocket, uh, air to air. That was my favorite part. They used one of the world's most advanced fighters. By the way, one of the most advanced fighters, so much so that the United States is not legally able to sell it to any other country to shoot down technology from the 50s. <laughs> so no. you do understand that it was at 60,000 feet. Yeah, I know. I just thought okay, I... So that's not the easiest thing. You and, and so we now here's the more information to this story. Apparently, since it was first sighted, uh, Cause it actually started, you know, of course, where the airflow goes and everything, a little over Canada and all that. And they've been watching it since then. And uh, they had an opportunity to shoot it down sooner if they wanted to. They just decided not to. Also, they've had on station with this balloon for a period of numerous days, uh, three uh, U-2 spy aircraft up there taking pictures of it, watching it, reading it, you know, whatever it's transmitting that kind of thing so there's a fair amount to this story wasn't it shot over. out over in montana it could have been shot over montana no they waited until it 
crossed over to the Atlantic Ocean uh, outside of uh, North Carolina, and uh, it, it was shot down there. Now, why did they not take advantage of shooting it down over Montana? Uh, they were always afraid that maybe some debris could come down and hit somebody, but... In Montana? It's a fairly well, empty I mean, state, you know, isn't it? Or, well, or... you know, you could take out a cow. Might might hit one of those uh, ICBM launch bases. Well, there's that too. That's partly why they were over. Uh, they <laughs> they thought, you know, it's like any balloon. You're kind of stuck to where the wind currents go, and even the Chinese can't make the wind blow in a different direction. So I'm not sure they had a whole lot of control. Talk about um, wind blowing in an opposite direction. Part of my favorite thing on the politics of this was somebody was saying this happened three times when Trump was in office, and my my first thought. To, the lack not wanting to get the politics was do you think that orange hurricane would have kept his mouth shut about three chinese balloons floating over the united states that would have been that that would have been you know he would be shouting from the nearest rooftop so i had heard through the grapevine as they say uh when trump was in office about at least one of the balloons coming across the united states it was just downplayed and then of course if you want to look into conspiracies you'd say well you know he's supposedly in bed with the chinese maybe he didn't want to shoot him down <laughs> so, i just you know you, you hear all kinds of things but uh i had heard of that so i got a a list for you or an article from cnn i labeled shocking <laughs> well so I'm just go for I'm, it, whatever you want. I'm just going to say the headline from CNN because when you read this, it was like, really? Sleeping disor sleep disorders are associated with more parental stress. That's a fucking shock. What I found well, you're out, only saying that because you're a parent. <laughs> yes, this is true. When when, when all my uh, friends who became parents before me said being a parent was stress, I'm like, ah, I, I bet it can be. No, it's fun, you know. <laughs> um. And then my dad, you know, the, the old guy pointing out, hey, this is why you have great. I have gray hair because of you. It's like, shouldn't have you been bald? Hmm. When I found no, out. Gray hair, he's not pulling it out. <laughs> yeah. When I found yeah, out, I was yeah. expecting my son a couple of years ago. It wasn't the process of labor I was most terrified of. It was the sleeping, dep the sleep deprivation I knew I'd be facing with a newborn for months on end without respite. <laughs> uh, I just thought this this whole article was was hilarious because label under the you needed a. You you needed a two or three hundred words to actually tell you that being a parent was stressful. Yeah. Okay. And the other one was <laughs> this is a listicle, by the way, Melanie. Pay attention. Trader Joe's asked customers to rank their nine top products, and here they are. This is CNN Business article. So top overall, chili and lime flavored rolled tortilla chips. How old is this article? Uh, uh, January ninth, twenty twenty three. Okay, it's I probably it's a repop. Oh, of course. Okay. Top beverage: the sparkling honey crisp apple juice. <laughs> Anybody actually believe that? Go ahead. This is sponsored by Honey Crisp <laughs> Apple Juice. No. No, no, the, this is sponsored by Trader Joe's and their marketing yeah. department. Because it's, you know, if, if you really want to get back in the tinfoil hat, it's like all the cigarette companies. This is the number one cigarette for you. You're dying to get your hands on it. Uh, uh, let's see. Top entry. Replacing the longtime marinated orange chicken is Trader Joe's Butter Chicken. A spicy chicken and a tomato and cream sauce with basmati rice. <laughs> so why is it butter? I don't know. Never mind. Go ahead. Never mind. Uh, uh, top household items. Uh, seasonal candles went out in this can uh, category. <laughs> Season scents included uh, peony blossom, cedar balsam, uh, pissam, and honey crisp apple and vanilla pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Top produce, unsurprisingly, customer. <laughs> unsurprisingly, customers voted bananas as their top choice in produce. <laughs> <laughs> what's so special about your bananas that the uh, yeah, i don't know trader Joe, joe's actually obviously gets some very special bananas i i guess theirs is the top banana top desserts <laughs> the the tiny crunchy hold the 
cone, mini ice cream cones with top dessert was the top dessert. No, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is why I, I like the list. It, it's like you know the off brand. You know, it's instead of buying the Nikes, you're buying the Mikeys. That, that, that's all they sell is off brand. Yeah. I know acquaintances of mine who love that store. Are like they're better than Safeway. Yeah, they're about a tenth the size of your average Safeway too. Oh, yeah, so, they're small. <laughs> They don't carry everything, so I don't know. You know, I've only been in those maybe three <clears throat> times in my entire life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of like me. I mean, they've got some, when I go, I usually find some interesting stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's not like that's where I'm going to go shop. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I mean, they're not, they're no bargain, that's for sure. Oh, definitely not. They're, they're expensive. Yeah. They do have decent yeah. food, though. I mean, it's it's some of the food. Oh. I, I bet it's a little cleaner than others, quality wise. Maybe. I bet. I don't know. I don't know. A few times I was in there, I wasn't overly impressed. But I, it's hard to be impressed with a grocery store, anyway. So I'm impressed with any grocery store that sells uh, uh, buffalo mozzarella. That shit's hard to find. <laughs> so um, yeah, you're gonna like real buffalo mozzarella or just like. You know stuff that they claim is either mm -hmm. one is hard how to do find. you really know it's funky you're well, watching it be squeezed from the yeah there you go so i'll it, it, I'll, I'll tell you one thing my wife would know if anybody could tell you if this is real buffalo mozzarella it'd be my wife okay. um so what as some buffalo did they kill it from <laughs> his name was uh tony he was from new york <laughs> So if anybody has a Grubhub account, it may be a good idea to keep that uh, away from your son. I looked at my bank account and it was getting drained. Michigan dad says his six-year-old spent nearly $1,000 on Grubhub deliveries. <laughs> yeah. And was the six-year-old also answering the door? <laughs> uh, That's what I want to know. When Keith Stonehouse let his son Mason play a video game on his phone before bed, he didn't expect it would lead to multiple meal deliveries from local restaurants. Stone documented the nearly $1,000 food shipment spree on Facebook. Imagine my shock when delivery drivers after delivery drivers show up late last night dropping off food at my doorstep, Stone wrote. It occurred, to, occurred, it occurred while his wife Kristen was, movie, uh, was at the movies leaving Stonehouse at home with Mason. It took a few deliveries for him to realize his son was behind the orders. Chicken, shawarma, chili cheese fries, ice cream, and more began to arrive at the Stonehouse residence. I looked at the food and then hit me. I looked up at my phone with repeated messages. The food was getting ready and my food was delivered. So, now, I'm going to tell you something. As a dad in this technology age, I don't know if John does this, but anything you have, let's say it's your Xbox your switch you, any of those things even your phones you need to make sure that they are password protected for any purchases <laughs> i had my xbox like i was asleep one morning and my son was playing my xbox he, he knew that he had a couple games on there i wake up and, I, and then he's on my xbox i'm like okay whatever he's playing his game then I check my bank account, and there's a charge. It wasn't a much, a very large charge, but there was a charge for something I never use. I think my account is being hacked hmm. because my son's only three or four years old. No, my son trying to make a purchase for a game I don't even have on there. Hmm. That was the last time that ever happened. <laughs> and any device that he uses, it's not anything you have to verify to make purchases. So hopefully he learned his lesson. And it, it, I mean, he's out a thousand dollars. I don't think Grandpa was going to no for food like that. I don't think they're going to refund you money. How I, I, I hope it was on a Friday night. Cause you know, that kid was having a lot of food with that, uh, a lot of fun with that food. Cause that'd be the last time that would happen. Um, yeah. I actually, when I hand my <laughs> son the phone, I actually like, I turn it, I turn the Wi-Fi, I turn Bluetooth off. I turn the, the the actual uh 
uh, internet, the G, the five, mode. the five G off, and then I put it in airplane mode. So, if, <laughs> and then I hand it to him. I mean, the negative side is I can't get any phone calls, but at least I know he's not going to be spending money. Yeah, um, true. Uh, Joe Joe Rogan uh, talked about in a story in one of his podcasts that his kids uh, wanted to have the phone unlocked so they could play a game or a tablet unlocked. The kid uh, recorded his wife actually entering the the the, the unlock code. And that and that's that's how they actually got the password to like their tablet or phone or something like that. <laughs> okay. Yes. And the the one thing I have to learn about being a parent is a friend of mine a long time ago said something that uh, it, it struck true having a, a young a kid under ten was children are jailhouse lawyers. They can be. That that is that that is a true statement. The amount of I'll do this and I'll do this. It's like yeah, uh huh. Yeah. My dad believed in me as much as I believe you. <laughs> Have you guys heard of the Liver King? Yes, <laughs> Mr. Well, Al Al Natural no. himself. Who's the Liver King? Look, just Google the Liver King real quick. You might it might come up with the article, but I want you to look at this guy. I just want you to see his physique. So this guy um, started his YouTube or whatever vlog, whatever, back in 2005. Oh, okay. Looks like a big and, Viking with yeah, lots so of <laughs> his muscles. Is he pr promoted this whole ancestral living style? His exercises <laughs> his routine is all inspired by our ancestors and it's to get back to your roots to eat liver to eat raw uh, bull testicles oh. cow brains eat the entire animal mm. caveman and you'll become strong your autoimmune you know diseases won't exist you won't have any allergy fatigue eczema <laughs> so, so our modern problem so basically he was okay. saying you should eat the animal from neck to nuts right is that, that what you're saying and on top of that he also was promoting his own performance line of products mm. okay muscle building supplements all this other crap so anyways a lot of people i guess bought into it well it came out to be that um Guess what he's uh, actually on? Yeah. Steroids. Of course. About $12,000 a month. Oh. Not just a little amount, a big amount. So he is now being sued by his own followers. <laughs> $25 no, no. million. Dollars. Mm -hmm. no, no, I wish too bad David Koresh's <laughs> followers didn't sue him. Jeez. Twelve thousand. I'm like, can this actually happen? Can you get this big doing this type of exercise and living routine? Probably, probably, it probably can happen. Do I, you believe it? Without without steroids, no. So this is this this is yeah. I I have a, about as enough knowledge of this to sound stupid but everything i've ever read is you can't naturally get that big there's a level from what i've read and from what i've heard that your body stops at and what and what pads and all these sub, uh, supplements do is they help your body they they give your body what it doesn't naturally have so i just don't see you getting anybody getting naturally that big without some sort of enhancing products no and the dude looks like a fucking cartoon character yeah yeah anyway so you know, I saw his stuff and I'm like, oh, you know, he would do like pizza of strength and like little clips and stuff like that. And this is what I eat type stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's great. You know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't impressed. I, I didn't think he was like this, you know, guy that I want to be following type thing, but I'm like, okay, that, that's great. He, he, to be honest, he kind of reminded me of Kimbo Slice. Yeah, but I mean, I, I guarantee if he got in the ring with an MMA fighter, he'd get put on the ground as well. <laughs> so, do you know who? Do you know what's not a disappointment? You know who's not a disappointment? Pay attention to our sponsor right now. Today's show is brought to you by Audacity, the unforgettable party game for mischievous people. The game where dignity is overrated. 
Make sure you go to O-D-D-A-S-S-I-T-Y dot com or selected stores. Make sure you use MADTRIO, all caps, all one word, for 10% off your final order. Make sure you tell Miss Adassi herself that the Mad Trio sent you. Do you want to keep up to date with the maddest of the mad at the Mad Trio podcast? Make sure you go to themadtrio.com or check out our social media feeds on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So, speaking of disappointments, let's talk about this uh, little kid who graduated from high school that's not a disappointment to his parents at only nine years old. Nine years old. Graduated from high school. He's in. He was in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. A little brainiac. Yeah, he graduated from from high school, and he wants to be an astrophysicist so he can study black holes and supernovas. Yeah, I'm hmm. thinking like, how old was Doogie Hauser when he was supposed to have graduated from high school? Does anybody remember no. what that myth was? No idea. Couldn't tell. Yeah. You. Anyways, um, and uh, now he's already starting community college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, jeez, uh, like, I can't believe, that's kind of a baffling thing, like, to really think that we have somebody that smart. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, and- you know, it, it seems like throughout the world, different places that there's always a you know a few young children that are just incredibly intelligent yeah uh, you know so you you always got a few it makes you wonder like if he's really gonna you know be out there and do something impactful yeah Yeah. good good point he's got plenty of time but you know he could actually you know reach 13 and be like you know what I don't, I don't, I don't like studying anymore. Girls are interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the, the only exactly, thing it, yeah. The only it, thing very, very well may happen. Only thing that I would be worried about is, you know, for for a kid like that is is the burnout. You know, he's sung yo so young, he's he's gone beyond what the bar is set to. Imagine having all these expectations that are placed upon you when you get older. That that stress has got to be murder. So I hope this kid has good parents who are trying, you know, you know, um, the parents were saying they didn't really put a bunch of stress on him, but that's what they're telling the news articles. (laughs) So (laughs) it's like, it's one of those, I don't really believe it until I know for a fact, you know, man, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being nine years old, graduating high school and going into college. Wow. That's something that only happens in TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm kind of thinking about, you know, like, hey, whatever. And well, and, and talk know, about I something think... that only happens in TV in Japan. Apparently, somebody was trying to sell a famous woman's used underwear on eBay. In Japan. No, this was in the United States. But, it, you know, the, the old joke is <laughs> they actually had a used underwear dispenser in Japan. Yeah, and okay. the story goes, yeah. you could find them in small out. You know, it was it was they were real, but they were rare. But uh, this this came up in eBay and eBay pulled it because of health and wellness violations. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, which probably is the sole reason why you it can't exists sell dirty underwear on ebay i'm sorry you just are not allowed to it's against their eula you gotta read the fine print kid right. <laughs> yeah it's always you always got to read that eula that's right <sighs> and it's uh i've never heard of this person and i'm not exactly <laughs> hip but it's it's uh lato l-a-t-t-o I have no idea who this person is. Oh, it's, she's hmm. a rapper. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, did he get any bids? <laughs> of course he did. Never mind. I, you know, I, I guarantee, you know, you know what eBay oh, should do you. next time this happens? What they need to do is they need to say the usernames. You know, like, Bob's House of XYZ, you know? I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Except when you find out your past, you know, your pastor is the one who's bidding on it, you know, Bob Jones. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me ask you guys a question. You guys any good at slang? <laughs> it depends on what era slang. you're talking about. 
So this is, uh, I got quite a list here going of slang throughout. This is for you, Melanie. Years. <laughs> throughout the years. So that, do, 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 do. none of these are really current um, slang. So many of these are kind of, mm, okay, so where did these certain things come from? For instance, we'll start out with one called a ragamuffin. Now, you would assume, what's what do you think a ragamuffin is? I've heard of that. Yes. Yeah. Dirty, uh, some hooks uh, a little raggedy. Look at, yeah, yeah, looking sloppy or ragged. Okay, so that was in the started in the early 1800s, mostly uh, children. Of course, that were kind of shabby looking at that time, but we didn't have the greatest hygiene going back then either. But it's kind of where the, the uh, term uh, ragamuffin, ragamuffin came from. Um, how about uh, ballpark figure? Where do you think that came from? Baseball. Yeah. So it's a baseball because you, we said ballpark, right? But what the heck does it mean? Um, I would assume that it means that, you know, they're the, um, the stats on the board. Okay. On, the, on the board. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, I mean, I, by the term ballpark, you'd kind of think that, but it really stemmed from commentators during baseball games uh, would guess the size of the crowds by estimating a number of spectac- uh, spectators. So that's how the term ballpark figure came about. So it just kind of rounds out. Yeah. So it's it a just, guesstimation. You know, we'll take, yeah, we'll take a guess that, you know, so many people are here at the stadium this day and there's 20,000 people standing on their feet cheering. Oh, I, I don't believe I should have. Oh, you know, what? it's the term uh, at the ballpark figure is. I should have. OK, I've actually heard that used within the last yeah. 20 years. Well, I mean, it's it's still used. I mean, you know, well, give me an estimate on this. Well, I'll give you a ballpark. I mean, that's that's a very common thing still to this day. I never thought how about, about the, that. How about the term uh, a goose egg? Well, I mean, you got hurt. What do you think a goose egg is? But so you might think it's, you know, like a bump on your head or something like that, because I've heard that term for that, but it actually stems from a competitor in a in a game, whatever it may, from failing the score. Really? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. I mean, some of these are kind of like, oh, okay. (laughs) Didn't know where they came from. Um and and Ballpark figures, you know, changed, obviously. I mean, some of the slang is, we use it in a different reference now. But uh, how about the the term, the uh, acid test? The what test? Acid test. So according to the Dragnet 1967, that's about people dropping LSD. (laughs) So uh, it became a pun in the 1960s for that, but it actually started back in the uh, mid 1800s for testing for gold. Ah, oh, that makes, a- that makes sense. Accident. Yeah. So, I mean, again, there was an example of it, it usurped back in the 60s for LSD parties and things. They're dropping acid. So I didn't realize that was actually used. That was, you know, that's interesting. Like that. Yeah. I've I've got quite a list of these going somewhere. Here's one that I I bet it's mostly in Texas. Here's one that's called all hat no cattle. <laughs> okay, I I don't know. That, that, uh, that's interesting. He's I've never heard sh- that one. Is it oh, like he's full okay. of shit? So it refers to someone who talks big but has no substance. Oh, I was right. All hat, no cattle. Yeah. I, I mean, that must be like a Midwest thing. Uh, it's a, yeah. It, apparently, it's a Texas thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, everybody um, knows Texans are special. And bark up the wrong tree. I mean, uh, never heard like that one. Term. Yeah, it's an 1800s term again. It had to do with hunting with dogs, packs of dogs, where they would yeah, jump up on a tree where it thought they were looking for um, an animal that actually wasn't there. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And we use it today for things like, you know, bark with the wrong tree is, 
you know, by maybe asking the wrong person something or the wrong thing. So, I mean, it's, there's still, here's another one, uh, still something we use. There's another one, cute as a bug's ear. You heard that one? That's probably more. Really say what yeah. Wrong. But it had to do with an insect's ability to react quickly. And it, it cause uh, anyway, short and stick, cute as a bug's ear, but. I've, I've heard it, but I always thought it was because my parents are old. Well, you're not wrong. Because <laughs> I use... So I, how about I, no dice? You probably said, hey, no... I don't know if you've ever used the term. Yes, I've no used dice. it. You have have used you? It. I mean, I can't say that I've used it often. Yeah. So it stems from a gambler's would hide dice in case they were going to be caught because courts would use them if you possessed a set of dice, I guess, walking around on the street, you were a gambler and you're gambling illegally. Uh, all right. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. You're so you're gonna, um, you're gonna break into here. a, a got, wild well, dice game. Yeah, yeah. You know, every street corner. But I guess it depends on where you live. I think dice games are still popular out in the <laughs> streets. You know, you've got nothing to do all day and you're not working. Go God, that, that sounds horrible. <laughs> 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 I suck at gambling. <laughs> Ask James. Yeah. All right. Well, a couple more here, really, really quick, and we'll save more for next week. How about uh, "Heard Through the Grapevine"? Pretty famous oh, yeah. song with that, right? Yeah. I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, yeah, that just rumors. You know, heard. I the... would think it's from all the people yeah. that are sitting there picking the grapes during grape season and spreading gossip. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, you guys are both actually right in many ways. Uh, one of the theories they're saying here is, is it's, it dates to the informal way of communicating through what was called the grapevine telegraph to people who were enslaved. So that's where it started Interesting. It was back, way back then. Uh, and then another theory it says it, uh, uh, it's a phrase that was used in early telegraph systems in the 19th century and used miles of wire strung from pole to pole to represent... Grapevine. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. And okay. the last one for today is jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, that's a pretty common one still, you know, yeah. jumping on the bandwagon or something, right? So uh, the idea that once it was uh, successful or popular, so that's jumping on the bandwagon, stems from an early American when musicians rode a wagon on their way to parades or rallies. Yeah, I could, I could yeah. see it. There's going to be a bunch of bandwagon people jumping for the Chiefs this, this Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Super Bowl, that's right. You're going to have to jump on somebody, Kansas City or the Eagles. All right, enough of that. So I, I, I have a story. <clears throat> this one makes me sad because I never got to see him in concert. Um, one of, in my opinion, the greatest front man, the greatest rock and rollers in history is officially said adieu to touring. Ozzy Osbourne is calling it quits because he's physically not capable of living a touring life anymore. There's a <clears throat> there's an example of uh, in excess of too many drugs. So part of it that I've seen that I, I heard part of it is because he had that ATV crash so many years ago that really screwed up his back and uh, yeah, but, he's been having problems all along, though. I mean, that was another example. He should have never been on that ATV. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so. I'm legitimately bummed, and I guarantee everybody who's listening to us knows who Ozzy Osbourne is. But he and the rest of the 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 fine fellows from Black Sabbath created an entire genre of music, in my opinion, and most people's opinion. Opinion um, with Black Sabbath. Uh, this actually bums me out. Mm. Uh, that that he's he's quitting and hopefully he keeps making music hopefully he'll be in his beatles period where he just starts releasing a ton of more music now that he doesn't have to worry about touring yeah i mean he definitely could so so do you yeah. i the question i'm wondering because you keep hearing like folks like him hulk hogan and a bunch of other these really famous people who have been around thousands of people do you think he's gonna miss it because that was Hulk Hogan's problem for a long time is, you know, said once you're around, you know, you have 100,000 people cheering for you that doing little mundane things is hard. You know, I would have to think that it, it, 
there's a real sense of satisfaction, you know, playing music and, and people cheering and screaming and carrying on. And, and it, absolutely you're going to miss it because, uh, so I'm sure he's he's going to miss it. Um, I think that's why we have so many of these old rockers still going out on tour. They they love it. I I hope it's that in instead of like money issues like Fleetwood Mac. I think who's who's finally give up you know gave up the ghost and touring and 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 the band. But you know you hope they decided the band they they touring for the band and the fans instead of realizing they spent poorly throughout the years and now they have no choice to be a retiree playing music, which is not uncommon. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I you know, I know that Stevie Nicks is back on tour again, and then I, she supposedly has done fairly well through her uh, solo solo career. So I, you know, I don't know. You know who's touring yeah. again? I just saw a thing that Smokey Robinson is going to release new stuff. Yeah. Really? If Smokey ever stopped touring? I think he was always out there touring. You know, there's some guys, you look at Willie Nelson and some, some of these people that are just, they never stop. They just, they're going, going, going. That just amazes me. Actually, what more amazes me is Willie Nelson's guitar hasn't decided to just destroy itself. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm i with you. Oh. Right now, John. No, he hasn't. No, it's, it's the, the same, same guitar. For, you know, yeah. Years. So yep. there's a. Playing that same, you, have you ever seen a close up of that guitar? It's I got am. holes in it. It's got, I mean, it is, I don't know how it's holding together. There's to be a, honest with you. there's a YouTube video. There's, there's a YouTube video. There used to be of some guy repairing it. Yeah. It, it, it it's gotta be more, I doubt there's any, no original wood left on the face. I do hope that. <laughs> well, with, there is some, but there isn't much. <laughs> I, I legitimately hope, uh, and this is a, a person who's a giant fan of music that, when he re- when he retires or when he passes away, that that goes to the Smithsonian for like to I actually think be- just fall apart when his soul leaves his body. <laughs> yeah, he <you> may. <laughs> he may be right, James. It's just that it'll it'll go into dust. Yeah, so. Go look at one of his modern concerts. I just saw a video of his recently, and there's a giant hole in it. Hmm. So we are in only, what, January? Uh, we're only in February, the beginning of February. And I already have our dumb criminal of the year. <laughs> okay. Are, are you guys ready for this one? How dumb yeah. this one is? This is the headline. A man in the U.S. has been shot dead after pointing a laser and firing a rifle at a police helicopter. This Wait. is the end of January. R- repeat that again. A man in the U.S. has been shot dead after pointing a laser and firing a rifle at a police helicopter earlier this week. Well, Damn! Yeah. Jeez. So this is what happened. I want I want you guys to take a wild guess as to what city this happened in. Okay. So I'm not going to mention the city, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with parts of it and leave the city and state out of it okay the unnamed uh 33 year old pointed a green laser from inside his home at the helicopter while it circ while it was circling in the north area of this city according to police so it wasn't looking for this guy okay so he just heard the helicopter goes and gets his green laser and starts pointing it at the helicopter. And then this is actual recording that was released, audio that was released. Now there's somebody standing at the back door right now. They're in the backyard. He actually might, he might be armed. He almost looks like he's holding a long gun pointing it at us right now. Yeah, he's shooting at us right now. <laughs> he's firing rounds. He's got a long gun extended magazine and then they opened fire and defended themselves so was this it so this was in a city right is that what you said a big city yes this was in a big city in the u.s can you guys guess what city this los angeles or chicago chicago detroit yeah that was going to be my first third yeah (laughs) that was my third uh, detroit (laughs) 
Yes. Uh, what what does was it a white guy? Uh, yeah. From my understanding. Okay, because it, it, it doesn't uh, matter. No, let, let, I don't care. About let let that me part. be honest. I, this is what's the difference? Because I don't see a brother pointing a laser pointer at a, a helicopter. That's some dumb white guy going. <laughs> that that's some that's a hick going. Hey Bob, old my right, beer. Yeah, yeah. No black dude's stupid enough to point a laser at a helicopter. That's a stupid white guy thing. I'm sorry. Well, it's not a laser. He he was pointing the laser at him, and then went and actually got a gun. When he got his rifle. Yeah, he so, got his rifle to shoot at a police helicopter. So did the cops this shoot him? Lasers not dropping this helicopter. I better get something bigger. So did the cops shoot him from the helicopter? Yes. <laughs> Good <laughs> shot, then. I, to, to be completely honest, I didn't know they were legally allowed to do that. And congratulations guess, to the officer. I guess. In, I guess in Detroit they are. <laughs> they got permission to defend themselves. <laughs> oh boy! Did did they say what caliber of rifle they used? Uh, no, not in the article that I saw. It might be. This was from the 27th of January, so we didn't even make it out of January before this was going on. <laughs> um, uh, I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. So they engaged in crossfire with the suspect. So the <laughs> helicopter engaged in crossfire. Two state police troopers moved in and shot it. Mm. <laughs> so the did fire back, but it, it, the state troopers are the ones who actually got him. Mm. Why? Why do I imagine this guy going, "Y'all, I'm gonna point this at that helicopter and go <laughs> knock it out of the sky"? So, <laughs> the, the other bit of information I, I didn't get into was this was an abandoned home that the guy was uh, basically, you know, was camping in. Of course, it was. And they squatting in that thing. Weapons, multiple weapons and ammunition stashes, according to them. <laughs> Six firearms on the property. Hmm. Yeah. I uh so, so maybe he was like planning to do something, was hiding there, and he thought the helicopter knew he was there, which they probably did know he was there, but nothing in the article or in the police statement say they were looking for this specific man. I, I I doubt they knew because if if the stories are still true, what I've heard of Detroit being a, the ton of abandoned homes, I doubt they knew who he was unless he was. Well, he's obviously an idiot and a scumbag, but you know, did something that you know rated getting the police attention. He just sounds well, like he a, definitely got police attention. Yeah, well, it's not like you're going to point a laser. It's not like you don't light up your rat. So we'll, we'll still get how these work. Oh, I just don't believe yeah. that actually happened. That's crazy. Mm. Well, whatever. That's that's uh he was whew. Well, uh any other stories? I, I do have a story, but I, I decided I don't really want to be any more depressing than I have been. No, go ahead. Finish so, up with your story. So I don't know what happened to James, but according to Fox Business, my Fox Business says Wall Street Economics says recession in 2023 will look like the biggest crisis of the 1970s. So there's that. So mm. I don't know whether you need to laugh, cry, or leave angry comments. Okay. Uh, well, um, you know. Uh, uh, Ro Roseanne uh, Barr is making her stand-up comeback. That should be great. You know, she can be funny. She she really can be. Uh, yeah, she can be. She can be. I um. <laughs> so I guess I guess that's where I'm going to leave that one. I you know I actually feel sorry for her, so I hope she does make a comeback and. One of the last things I want to talk about before we, we end today's program, because we talked about everybody's favorite stoner, Willie Nelson, or Snoop Dogg, but this is about uh, Willie Nelson. Uh, Willie Nelson's unveils star-studded 90th birthday concert plans. April 20th through the 29th through the 30th event at Hollywood Bowl to feature Neil Young, Bob Weir, Casey Musgrave, Snoop Dogg, Tom Jones, and more. Hmm. 
So it's Snoop Dogg's now a, a musician. Uh, Snoop Dogg is a big fan of Willie Nelson. Oh, well, that I know. But Willie mm-hmm. Nelson's the only person who ever outsmoked Snoop Dogg. Oh, here. So in additional, there's going to be uh, Allison Russell, Beck, Billy Strings, The Grateful Dead's Bob Weir, Charlie Crockett, Chris uh, Chris Stapleton, Eddie uh, Brickell. There's a ton of people. Actually, Rosanna Cash is going to be there. Show Crow. If they actually have a video of this, I'd, I'd love to see it. This is uh, pretty amazing. So it's like, I mean... <laughs> this sounds like uh, more than a one night concert. Yeah, it's the, the it's the 29th through 30th. So <laughs> it's like you overnight. You start there on the 29th to get through the 30th and you're done by the 31st. <laughs> you're, you're, are you yeah, kidding? Uh, unless you wake up yeah. on the second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm pretty sure the first night with that audience and the person they're doing over, you're not going to remember much of that concert besides it was great. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We want to celebrate, uh, say congratulations on making it to 90 to Willie Nelson. He's pickled, if that's what you call somebody who <laughs> used an obsessive amount of marijuana. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the hey, California. Kept him alive. This is true. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for the California Pride, the fat man and the old guy, as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.